one, but the, there's a new one coming in right here. And the picture plants aren't doing the best, but I'm going to leave them in sunlight. I'm going to leave this slit open for a little bit so they can get some fresh air and maybe catch something. Um, I have, this is my mom's spray bottle. I don't like the pink color, but I this is the only one I have that's clean, been thoroughly rinsed off to make it safe for them. Um, do you have water? This is distilled. Um, because spring and tap water are dangerous for your plants, carnivorous plants it is. Um, so, uh, I spray them, uh, probably once a week, um, or something. I just spray them a pretty good amount recently. Um, when I first took them out of, uh, hibernation, um, about a couple weeks after I did, uh, take, uh, took them out, I, uh, watered them very heavily. Uh, uh, I pretty much watered the whole base of the plant. Please, if you could let me know if I'm overwatering or not. Um, by the looks of the plant, and um, tell me how I should water my carnivorous plants. I don't know much about watering. How often should you water them? How much should you miss them? Um, because uh, you know, mine sit on their windsill um, over there. Um, I took their lid off again because they needed some fresh air, uh, and it's actually pretty warm indoors right now inside um, my house. So um, they're probably not going to get cold or anything. If you notice, um, let me show you. Sorry, um, right here, uh, this one has a little bit of orange tint. This one has barely any on the, uh, edges, but the, um, other ones don't have orange barely at all, um, which is actually not a good sign. Venus flat trap should have a little bit of red at least in the middle of the um, center of the trap. The reason why is uh, it's in critical condition to have this is because Venus fly traps, when they have that red, that means they're getting perfect amount of sunlight. So that means these guys aren't getting enough sun or water, one of the two. Um, carnivorous plants are very unpredictable, actually. Um, can be very difficult to care for if they're not cared in the right um, way. Um, but if you do know how to take care of them pretty well, um, then they will thrive and do actually pretty well and they won't die. Um, I definitely don't recommend, like, um, picture plants to beginners unless you're going to get, like, a, um, what's it called? I forget the, um, it's called a, I don't know, it's called a pop cap, uh, picture plant? No, it's a white, not the North American white picture plant. Those are almost endangered. Um, the, oh, what was the name of it? It, um, I'm trying to think, I had some, they lived a long time, they thrived in captivity pretty well. Uh, what are they called? Called something. Uh, I'll research them, put them in the description on what they're called. But they do great in captivity. And, um, you know, certain, and so do purple picture plants. These, believe it or not, are not purple picture plants, I don't believe. Um, like I said before, I have a friend that knows a ton about carnivorous plants. He actually knows Peter from California Carnivores. Um, I don't live in California, so I've never ordered from them. I do want to order for them. Perhaps maybe when the late spring, early summer comes, I will order some carnivorous plants from them and get some carnivorous plants from Lowe's as well. Um, so maybe I'll grow my collection of carnivorous plants uh, and try and keep them from dying. Um, carnivorous plants are very difficult to take care of when it comes to watering and sunlight, but if you can get those things right, they're very easy to take care of. So, um, it all depends on your skill level of plants, period, if you've never had them before. Um, a carnivorous plant, I recommend on starting with perhaps a Venus flytrap or a p purple picture plant, or the, uh, other picture plant I was trying to tell you before, I forget the name, uh, they... They're big. They get pretty big and tall. Um, I had them in a 10-gallon terrarium. Didn't have no soil or substrate. I actually just had them in their pots. In the 10-gallon terrarium, they did great in there because I laid over it. They kept the humidity up at a high, high level. Um, and they just arrived in there until uh, the lights that did turn it on and stopped watering on them some, and then they died, unfortunately. But um, I forget the name they were called. I have picture plants. They're white. They have like a white. Oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. They're uh they're green and have this like white uh dots on this. And then when you go all the way to the top of the picture plant, to the um actual 
um, cavity of it, um, it's got like all white, and then the um, hood over it's like white with a little bit brown. Um, they're called, I think they're called um, snake picture plants. No, they're called something flower picture plants. Do picture plants something? Uh, might be butterfly picture plants. I'm not entirely sure what the name is, but uh, when I find that out, if I do, I will put it in the description box on what type of. Uh, um, plants they are, and um, I'm trying to think. Um, uh, if I, I don't know. Um, I may even put the California Carnivores website link in my description box, just so um, if you want to buy some plants from there, which I do highly recommend. They take five star care of their plants. It's like you may. If some people that are watching this may be into not carnivorous plants or plants at all, they may be into reptiles or fish or another hobby, and I'm into pretty much all three very well, reptiles, fish, carnivorous plants, um, I like other types of plants like cacti, um, and, uh, Diefenbachias and stuff like that, and, um, I also like technology like, um, you know, the iPads and the computers, cell phones, other tablets, cameras, um, rock collecting. Like I said, I've like I like many different hobbies and you can imagine it costs a fortune to keep up with them and it does. Um oh speaking of fish, uh real quick an update on my beta. He is doing good but um his tanks were really kinda like fat out right now, so I'm not gonna show him. Um I named him Siam because he's from he's a Siamese fighting fish and he's from Thailand. Um or they come from Japan and China too I think. But they're mainly from Thailand, and they're called Siamese Fighting Fish. Um, and um, I named him Siam, Simon for short. Um, and he's a very beautiful fish, if you've seen uh, videos. I'm going to post a link, actually. I'll tell you what, I'm going to post a um, little, like, click-on thing right here at this Venus fly trap so you can like click on it I don't know it's interactive I think that's cool if you put like a link over something specific um so go ahead and click on that link over that Venus fly trap and you will be taken to the uh, uh great video of my beta fish um it depends on which video I'm gonna put on there I don't know exactly yet I may put the virtual look I have this new idea called the fish angle a virtual look at your uh, fish or any pet really uh pet angle you could call it um where people actually you know just put a camera or an iPad whatever that can film in high definition and clear and great quality um they just put that device that can record video and solid and uh HD beautiful clear video it's not uh faded at all or choppy and they just put the camera in front of the uh, animal's enclosure. It could be a frog, pet, it could be a reptile, it could be a fish. And you just put it in their enclosure for at least 11 to 20 minutes. And you basically just film it for that long. And then you stop and you edit it a little bit, um, take the bad parts out, you know, or something. And you can put music, take the uh, sound, background sounds away, put music or narrate it or whatever. And uh, that way people get the experience of having a pet without having one. That's um, a new idea I thought of um, a few months ago. I think it's a great idea. Actually, I thought about it a year ago. Um, and I think this is going to be a great way for people to experience pets over YouTube. I definitely do this on YouTube anyway. I watch people's uh, videos to experience the pet keeping myself. Like if I don't have a specific pet, like say a... Uh, uh, a tarantula right now, like I said before, I gave my tarantula away to the animal rescue so Emily would not die, and she didn't. I gave her to the animal rescue, so I don't have her anymore, um, but the animal rescue said that they will find a, a good home for her, and pretty easily, too. They said that actually tarantulas are a very popular pet right now, so, um, and they thanked us for taking her there, and, uh, there we go, so she's, uh, at the, um, I think she actually got adopted, I'm not entirely sure, I might have to call back and check how she's doing, um, but, uh, anyway, um, also about the fish virtual, or pet angle, um, I, I invented this idea, I'm sure a lot of other people thought of this too, because, um, it's a really simple idea, you just put a camera in front of the animal's enclosure, and just 
let it film for a good while to get a true experience of what the animal does and is like and a variety of different movements. It's a, and it's, I don't want it to be like a screensaver where it keeps repeating, repeating. I want it to be fully straight interactive video. Um, I'm actually going to make a contest of this soon. Um, so I'll let you guys know more about that later. But um, it's already going on 10 minutes and 50 seconds. So I'm just going to cut the video here. So um, my beta fish is doing good. I'm going to change him today because he's fat out. So that's why I didn't show him. Um, and I'm also going to... Um, clean him out really well, check on him, and I fed him like four pellets, I shouldn't have fed him four, I fed him three yesterday because that's when his tanks started to get fatty, um, but, um, cloudy, I mean, um, but, uh, basically, just let me know more about watering your carnivorous plants, um, because I don't know entirely too much about the, uh, watering of carnivorous plants, I know you have to use distilled or, uh, rain water, to water them, but, uh, I used distilled bottled water, you know, th not bottled water you, like, drink out of, you know, jug distilled waters, so the jug is purified, I actually can use it for anything, the animals, you, I could use it for my beta, you can use it for reptiles, I actually used to use it for squirting my reptiles and amphibians, I used it pretty much to squirt my chameleon, my dart frog, my red-eye tree frog, I used it to water my carnivorous plants and some of my other plants, I used it to water Emily, my tarantula, I've used it to... Um, even with fish, I, I recommend that still water is easy access way to any water, um, necessary needed for any animal or plant. The still water is clean, as safe as can be, perhaps the safest water known to purchase, um, for any, even people, you can just, the still water can be for any use, literally, I mean, it's the safest water, I'd say, almost, in the world, almost, um, I'm sure there's better water than that, but it's probably the safest you can easily find. Um, so, um, and also, you know, just giving you an update on my carnivorous plants, letting you know they're doing okay. Um, just let me know if how I should uh, give them some better rays of the sun, too. Like, if I should put them in a different uh, spot, I'll show you really quick on where I, um, here, I'm just going to show you real quick a better view of the carnivorous plants, because that a little bit cloudy. There we go. That's crystal clear. Okay, there's a good view of the fly trap. Okay, so let me show you. Here is where I keep them. That's their lid. And I keep them in front of this window. This is my mom's snake plant. It's actually used to be mine, but I gave it to her. Um, it's my mom's decorations, which is some stuff she likes to have. This is her uh, desert plant. Actually, got a water today. Um, pretty nice looking plant actually. I think it's some type of jade. Very nice plant. Um, okay, and there were some, in fact, I'll show you some shrubs and stuff there. Sorry, I'm just sitting on an office chair. Um, rolling by. There's some outdoor plants. Very nice scenery. The field across the street. So, um, let's see. That's my very old computer. It's a compact from 2001. Um, it don't even turn on. I'm just going to throw it away or sell it to a, a computer geek that can uh, fix it or would like it for themselves. Um, I'm going to sell it for a cheap price, though, because it's not worth probably a cent. Um, I may just give it away or throw it away. Um, so, that's uh, this is where I keep them. It's facing south because the other direction is north. So, uh, let me know if this is a good spot to keep them in the sun. They get the morning rays. And then it, they don't get the evening. I don't know which is better, morning or evening for them. They get somewhat of the afternoon. So they get morning and afternoon sun, and that's it. So, um, there you go. That's carnivorous plants. That's my uh, birthday cake over there because um, April Fool's Day was my birthday. Um, so just a few days ago, Sunday, and today's uh, Good Friday, almost Easter. So have a happy Easter, and, um, and also, uh, Basically, if you're uh, Jewish, I know 